thank you all for being here. And that does remind me, everybody probably got one of these in the mail, right? Has anybody not voted yet besides me? I haven't. Okay, so everybody's going to go to the polls and vote on Tuesday or go this afternoon or, um, or Monday. So you can go in person to the um, courthouse and vote, but make sure you do it because um, this is an important election and um, it's important to me, to all of us. So I want to recognize our office holders. We have Ross Wilburn, State Representative Ross Wilburn. Herman Kornbach, State Senator Herman Kornbach back there. And we have some former office holders. We have Jane Halliburton. And the third county supervisor, we have former State Senator Johnny Hammond. And did I miss anybody that I should be recognizing? Great. So um, yesterday, I got a text from Jennifer, and she said, yeah, OK. Um, and I think we all know that um, the gun violence is hitting closer and closer to home. And it hit us so close on um, Friday night? Was that Friday night? No, Thursday night. Thursday night. Uh, and Hours after he bought a weapon last morning. Right. Hours. It's, you know, something that you had, we've had Uvalde, we had Buffalo, we had uh, Tulsa, and then we had three people die from gun violence in Ames. Um, all so close together, it's just so hard for me to believe. Now, I've been serving for 18 years, and a few years ago, it was 2011 actually, and there was a state representative who um, had kind of won in a fluke election. She only stayed for one term. And she got up on the House floor when we were debating guns, and she said, I need my guns. We all need our guns to fight the government, to overturn the government. I thought that was the most crazy thing I'd ever heard in my life. So that was 11 years ago, right? And then we have January 6th where we have crowds of people trying to overturn an election. Um, and I talked to several other people recently who said, oh yeah, that's why my friend owns guns, is to protect himself from the government. We are living in a time that I never, ever thought we would be living in. I mean, it is just sometimes unbelievable how people are thinking. So, um, one thing that... I promised on Facebook yesterday, I don't know how many of you are Facebook people, and I did get a really good response from this. I said that we would talk about guns today. And people who are really, really concerned did respond to me. They didn't show up. <laughs> I was a little afraid that we'd have too many people because people are hurting and they're concerned. Um, but one of the things that I think this group is probably very aware of, but there is a constitutional amendment on the ballot in November that would make it so we cannot pass any laws restricting or any gun safety laws. We need to have that word out like nothing. I mean, everybody needs to vote against that. That needs to be something that we are all working on besides electing majority in the Iowa House to make sure that we can pay, pass some gun safety laws. So, um, that is um, the, the biggest thing that I think is really on um, people's minds right now. It is something that is, is hitting us hard. We've had a lot um, of other issues. I know you know that we managed, and I think Jennifer is a big part of this. We managed to beat down the voucher bill. <laughs> so, But we've had so many failures. Like our response to COVID has just been abysmal. And uh, I believe there's a bill on the governor's desk saying that preschools and schools cannot require a vaccine, a COVID vaccine, which I, I don't know how we can possibly, possibly do that. We've attacked trans women. We won't allow trans women to be athletes anymore. We've had a lot of um, difficult issues. One of the issues that I think is, um, 
really important uh, that corporations, employers are very concerned about is childcare, and we failed them this year. We have failed to provide good public policy to promote childcare. How do we get all this information? How do we let the public know where our failures are and how do we get in front of, of these issues and elect Democrats to the Iowa legislature? Well, I have brought our expert, <laughs> Jennifer Confers, is our minority leader and a great friend. And so I'd like to turn it over to Jennifer. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Um, how amazing is Beth Russell Michelle? Can we just give her a huge round of applause because she's amazing? Um, so I'm Jennifer Confers, and I am lucky enough to uh, serve with Beth. And you need to know, you all know this, but you need to know that she is truly a remarkable legislator, a remarkable person and an amazing, amazing advocate for you. Um, this is, it's not often that you get to turn to a colleague and say, Can you just take this and just, I trust you implicitly to handle this issue, and that is Beth. So I feel really lucky to get to work with her. So I, um, I was first elected in 2018, so I'm a newbie up there, um, and quickly saw that um, I wanted to see if I could take advantage of some leadership opportunities. And in that role, I was elected the first woman to lead the Iowa House Democratic Caucus um, a year ago, which is strange. Feels like it should have been long before now, but that's all right, we'll take it when we can get it, right? So, um, you know, we did just finish up uh, quite, a, quite a tough legislative session. And uh, if, if nothing else, We've been doing some new research, we've been talking to people, we've been listening to voters, and what we're hearing from them is, boy, are they sick and tired of us. They are sick and tired of politics. They are sick and tired of seeing how it all works. You know how they always say you don't want to see how laws and sausages are made? They really don't want to see how laws are made. <laughs> I think they'd go to a sausage factory before they'd come to the Capitol, some of these folks. Um, and they're tired. They're sick of politics. They feel like we need to that we're doing more, more focused on our, more focus on ourselves, less focus on them, right? As voters, so we've been listening to that, and so when we started this legislative session, we started working on a people first agenda, something that would really say we're going to put people over politics this year, and we put that out there. So a lot of you know we're in the minority, and so we vote no a lot, <laughs> a lot more than I'd like. But we also propose legislation, right? This year, when the Republicans proposed a $300 million corporate tax cut, we said, let's use that $300 million for public schools instead. This year, when they said, we're, gonna make sh you know, we're not gonna give any more money to the region's institutions, we said, we need to make sure that students and families don't have to carry the burden of college debt. So we tried very hard to look at people versus politics up there and put forward an agenda that we think was more focused on what everyday Iowans want. We know that Iowans don't want school vouchers. They just don't, in an overwhelming majority. And so we fought back hard. Democrats stood together. There were Republicans in the House who knew that this was devastating for, uh, for rural schools, and so they voted no. So a lot of folks are giving credit to some House Republicans, but I think we need to remember that Senate and House Democrats stood strong against school vouchers, so they had to look in their own backyard for votes because they couldn't count on us. Um, we know that Democrats are with, that, that Iowans are with us on a woman's right to make her own health care decisions. We know that. They're against that, right? And there's a reason with all these Supreme Court cases coming down that the governor, when asked, are you still going to do something about abortion in this legislative session, said, no, I don't think so. The reason is she knows it's not popular. She doesn't want to do something before an election year because they'll figure it out. They're, I'm not worried. <laughs> they have ways to make sure that we can't make our own decisions. But she's, she didn't want to do that because she knows it's not legislatively and politically popular in this state. And then there are guns. There's the issue of gun violence that is hitting cl so close to home, as Beth said. And it is, last session was really our gun session, right? Or last, uh, last yeah, session. The last year, last legislative year, 2021, <laughs> was really when all the gun things passed, including constitutional carry, they call it which is essentially the background, background check elimination bill. Um, it says that you don't need to have a background check unless you buy it from a federally licensed facility. You can just buy a gun. Um, this year we did some, you know, some other legislation that was 
a little bit toward guns, but mostly it was last year. And it was that constitutional amendment that Beth talked about a minute ago, the, uh, that is on the ballot this fall. So make no mistake, public education is on the ballot this fall. So is the right to live in a society where you're not constantly scared of gun violence. And that right will go away when we have this constitutional amendment that means that any gun law needs to be held to a standard that's so high it probably can't pass muster. And so background checks, um, boyfriend loophole, red flag laws, all of those things, not even possible really, probably, with, uh, with this constitutional amendment. So the stakes are pretty high. We know the governor's out there, she didn't like it. She didn't like it that there were Republicans who weren't with her. She didn't like that at all. She didn't like that there's this whole three branches of government thing. She, wa she wants to be the queen. I don't know where she gets this. Hmm. Wonder where she got that philosophy. Um, and she uh, is going around, she's recruiting primary candidates against Republicans who are anti-voucher. And she's working in their races. But she's only doing it in races where she thinks she can win. She was 11 to 28 votes short in the House for vouchers, 11 to 28. She's, she thinks getting involved in two or three primaries is gonna do it, it's not. But the people that she's recruiting might be for vouchers, but they're also for a lot of really extreme, <laughs> crazy policies. And so, I mean, vouchers are too, but you know, I mean, there are other things that they're for. So we think it's really important that we uh, draw attention to what they've done. When I became leader last June, I said that we need to hold Republicans accountable. What Republicans say at the door is very different than what they say on the floor and what they do on the floor, right? Beth talked about childcare. Eddie Andrews down in Johnson is gonna knock on doors and tell people we fixed the childcare crisis in the state. <laughs> He'll tell them. And because people are busy and not paying attention and have lies, and they shouldn't have to, they should trust that when we come to your door, we're not gonna lie to you. They will believe him. And so it's our job to point out that he's lying. It's our job to point out that when they say that mental health is solved in the state, we point out they've done nothing. They've created an infrastructure and they've done nothing. They love to talk about what they've done. They don't love to do it. Because then they lose their issue and their special interests lose what they want. So before I get too negative, Nellie, there are a couple good things that happened this session. We had this great idea for what, 18 years, Beth, 20 years? Let's eliminate the sales tax on diapers and feminine hygiene products. We did that this year. You're welcome, Republicans, for that great idea. Um, we, we did help to make college more affordable by expanding some job training programs. Could have done more, but we did that. We um, invested in homegrown energy future with the Iowa Energy Center. We made more students eligible for college aid. We promoted Iowa food products and we cut red tape for restaurants. But you know, I had to tell you, on, on the night of uh, last night of session, session went a little long this year, as you all know, way long, 123 days, supposed to be 100. Uh, I was in the back room and the reporters came out and said, can we do a press, quick press conference with you about how the session went? And I was so still nervous that vouchers were gonna happen. Like I'm just looking at every bill for the word educational savings account. You know, I'm like, they're surely gonna sneak it into some farm bill or something. And so I was a little distracted and they asked me the questions and I went through all of my points and then they're like, did anything good happen this year? And I gotta tell you my friends, I've been doing media relations and interviews with reporters since I was 22 years old. It's what I do for a living. Froze for the first time ever. Froze, froze. Absolutely had no answer. And I, seven reporters looking at me, a camera, a light, and I'm like, I, I don't have anything. I, I can't think of anything. Like I froze. It was the most embarrassing moment of my entire career. And it was just a couple days ago. Um, and because I couldn't think of anything. I couldn't think of anything because it was so, the, the best news that came out of this session was that vouchers didn't happen. That's the best news we can say. So with all of this, what we need to do is we need to bring more Democrats to the Iowa House. That's clear. That's like clear to me at least. I think it's probably clear to people in this room. And I'm gonna be honest with you. We thought we were gonna get there in 2020. Uh, nationally, not a single legislative, legislative chamber flipped from red to blue. Only one flipped from blue to red. So 2020, they, we thought we were gonna have the sweep of legislative chambers across the country. Nothing. We lost six seats. It was devastating. So we've been spending a lot of time since then figuring out what went wrong. Are we talking to the wrong people? Are we saying the wrong things? Are people voting that we didn't expect to? What is happening? What we're learning is that our loyal Democratic base is staying home. Our 
sort of iffy Democratic base, the folks who kind of go both ways, registered Democrats but maybe voted for Trump, they're voting for Republicans. There are a lot of Republicans who don't like Trump but still vote for Republicans everywhere else, right? So you all know it in your daily conversations. We have research now to show that that's true. So we're changing who we talk to. We're changing what the voter profile looks like. And we're going to knock on doors this summer, which is a nice return to what we'd like to do. Now, I would argue that there were two races in the House that would have benefited from door knocking. With every other one, the, the margins were too big that doors would have made a difference. But it can't hurt. So let's go do it as much as we can, because we know voters want to talk to us. So I'm going to be honest with you that um, in 20, when we passed this redistricting map, the new one that we finally got to, there was no gerrymandering. Yay for us. We did not. We have a fair map. This map that we have for the Iowa House is competitive. This map shows that Iowa is a purple state. Period. End of sentence. I will not hear it from the national Republicans who say, it's all these, you know, Iowa's a red state, it's lost forever. Absolutely not. I won't hear it. And so when I go to tell them, I tell them that if we had had this map in 2018, we would have been at 51 members. This map right now is competitive. Am I going to get to the majority? Am I going to pick up 11 seats in November? No. I'm going to be honest with you. No. Am I going to get us closer? Or is Beth going to help me get us closer? Yeah. Is Ross going to help us get closer? You bet. We're going to get closer. And then that's more votes they have to find in their own caucus. If they were 11 to 28 votes short of vouchers this year, imagine what it'll be like when we're at 42, 43, 44. We're going to be able to hold the line more because their Republicans are divided. They are fighting. It's super fun to watch. A couple times Beth and Ross and I would be on the floor and Republicans would have some screw up. They'd mess up. They'd do something bad. And a couple of our colleagues would be like, let's point it out. Let's stand up and make fun of them. And we'd be like, no, no, shh. Let them fight against each other. Let's, we don't want to give them a common enemy, right? Let's let them fight with each other. <laughs> that would have been so fun to point out. <laughs> so fun. Um, and we did laugh about it upstairs in caucus. But um, the bottom line is that we have to pick up seats. And that means looking at places like Dallas County. There's a new seat in Dallas County um, where David Young, Congressman David Young, just can't keep his name off a ballot. He decided to run for the Iowa House after serving in Congress. And uh, I don't know why you would do that, but he is running against um, one of two candidates, either Sonia Hyde Susan or Tom Walton, and they're both running down there in uh, Dallas County. We'll find out on Tuesday who won. If it's Sonia, she was a news anchor for years and years and years. She's been coming into people's homes. People are responding really well to her. We've got flip opportunities in Ankeny. I'm not ready to give up on Ankeny yet. The districts are better right now. If Heather Matson, who is running for the Iowa House again, Heather Matson is amazing. If she had been on the ballot, if she'd had this district in 2020, she would have won. If we've got a great candidate named Molly Buck up in Northern Ankeny, running um, in an open seat right now, because Mike Buslow got to the House, stayed there about 10 minutes, and now is running for the Senate. You can have him, Herman, but I hope you don't get him. <laughs> um, is she, no, he isn't. He isn't. He's going to go home. Uh, packed, uh, she is a teacher, breast cancer survivor, was like, I'm sick and tired of being told I have a sinister agenda. First day of the legislative session. First day. I'm in the House talking about working together, putting people over politics. <laughs> what is Jake Chapman doing? Saying that teachers have a cynical, sinister agenda, talking about banning books, and saying he wants to put teachers in jail. Molly Buck and Ankeny said, nope. I'm running for the Iowa House. We're going to change the narrative up at the Capitol. We've got a lot of people running across the state. We've got J.D. Schulten running up in Sioux City. We've got an amazing candidate down in Ottumwa who's a steel worker. She's running to take back Ottumwa. We've got candidates up in Cedar Rapids and Lynn County. We've got amazing candidates out in western Iowa. We've got Virgery Sampson who, if she wins the primary, would um, is a pastor from western uh, Council Bluff. She'd be amazing to beat Brent Segrist. We've got Josh Turek, who's a Paralympic gold medalist, four-time gold medalist, who's running to, to take Charlie McConkie's seat since he's retiring. We've got Sammy Sheets in Cedar Rapids, who's going to be the first Arab-American legislator in the state of Iowa. We've got Elle Wyant, who's going to be the first trans uh, legislator in the state of Iowa. Our caucus is going to get more diverse. Our state's going to be better represented. And we're going to have more Democrats in the Iowa House 
because of the work of people like Ross Wilburn and Beth Russell Kershell are gonna help us expand our majority and you're helping us get there with your money. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So that's what's at stake, right? That's what's at stake. I have a speech, but um, I forgot my readers and I'm 48. So it's really good, you guys, it's meaningful. I could stand like this and tell you, with our long history of strong public schools, no. <laughs> so I'm just talking instead. But this is the outline, I promise. Um, so you know what's at stake. You know what our chances are, right? So now the question becomes, what can we do? What can we do to help put more Democrats in the House? And the Senate room, and I'm not putting you off, but I got one job, and that's the Senate. It's actually your guy. He'll flip the Senate. I got to flip the House. We got our roles. Um, what can you do? Well, you've done part of it right now, right? You've given some of your treasure, and that means a lot. Um, we're going to have a lot less money this time to work with. Um, be honest with you, the national groups think Iowa is a red state. A lot of them have written us off. I promise you I'm trying every day. Ross is trying every day to tell people we're not a red state. I got proof. I got data. Um, but some of them still are. So it's going to be a homegrown campaign. We're raising our own money, and we're doing it with our own time. But we also spent a ton of money last time, much more than Republicans, and lost six seats. So apparently we had too much money last time. <laughs> That's the problem. We just had too much money. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's not possible. Um, so what you can do is that. You can knock on doors if you're comfortable. You can talk with um, Beth and Ross about districts, about knocking in their district or knocking in other districts around here that need our help. You can spread the word on social media. So here's what I found out. Facebook is everything. Who hates Facebook? Who? Me. Who needs to be on Facebook all the time because that's where the voters are? Oh, me. <laughs> Especially in rural areas. Yes. So Facebook is where most people get their news nowadays. Facebook is where they get their information, and we got to be there. In one month, a partnership with Iowa Starting Line, they looked and saw um, all of the Republican Facebook messages and engagement on the social media and all of the Democrats in the same month. 800,000 for the Republicans, 80,000 for Democrats. We gotta do better. So when you see a post from a Democratic group or one of us or anybody, like it, share it, comment on it. When you see a post from somebody that you can't stand, if there's Kim Reynolds or some Republican saying something ridiculous, can you do me this one favor? Ignore it. Don't like it. Don't thumbs down it. Don't go on there and argue with somebody because all that does is help more people see that post. The best thing to do is ignore it. Plus, it's so much better for our mental health if we don't fight on Facebook, right? <laughs> it's so much better. So you can do that. You can help our truth machine. When you start hearing things about how, oh no, the strict scrutiny amendment, the constitutional amendment's not that bad, it's not gonna do that, tell them they're not right. We'll give you information. Prove to them that they're wrong. They're being sold a bill of goods. When you hear that we've fixed mental health in the state, which I promise you, you will hear, tell them they're wrong. And here's what needs to be done. When you hear that, oh no, no, the abortion stuff isn't gonna be that bad, they're wrong. Tell them. I like to say, remember that quote, um, you're political nerds like me, remember that quote, um, you campaign in poetry and you govern in prose? Has anybody heard that phrase before? Okay. I like to say Republicans campaign in moderation and govern in the extreme. So they go out there and act like they're F Joe everybody. Oh, I'm just here to listen. Boy, do I love the, the working moms and the families and I love women's rights and equality and all that. And then they get there, and I don't know what happens to them when they walk through that door, but that's not who they are. So help us combat the misinformation, and I would say the disinformation, right? They're literally lying to advance their own political causes. We can help expose the truth. So we have three things I need you to do. I need you to give money when you can. I need you to give your time when you can. And I need you to understand that we know how you feel, and we know you're tired. Right? We get it. We need to do things differently. We're working hard to do it. But at the end of the day, we got to fight. We have to fight. It is so easy to want to give up. It is so easy. I had a dream last night that we lost seats this fall. I'm going to be honest with you. That's not good for my mental health either to dream about this. I apparently talk in my sleep. That shocks everyone. And I, um, 
I know. It's because I got so many words I gotta say every day and I don't finish. I have to keep going in my sleep. And uh, I sat up and I said to my husband, we're at 38. And he's like, what? And I said, we're at 38. What are we gonna do? And he goes, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't remember this because I don't remember these conversations. And I said, we're at 38 seats. Iowa, I said to him, if, if a woman wants to get an abortion in this state, I have to get us to 51. And he was like, okay. Okay, we're gonna maybe take some melatonin. And we're gonna have it. But the point is that the stakes are so high, we have to make progress. And we have to see that the goal is gonna take a little longer to get to, right? I came in wanting to get to 51 in 2022. I would be lying to you if I told you we were gonna get there. I wanna be honest with you, I wanna tell you the truth. But I also want you to know that not getting to 51 doesn't mean. 50, 42, 43, 44, doesn't matter. Because it really, really does. There are pro-choice Republicans. There are anti-voucher Republicans. There are pro-common sense gun reform Republicans. If we can make it so that they have to find those voices in their own caucus, and we have to give them more, then we can stop some stuff. The voucher bill alone is what gives me the hope that the progress we're gonna make this fall will be worth it, and then boy, are we gonna have a good time in 2024, right? So that's what I need from you. And I need you to do me this huge favor and send me back Beth and Ross, because I need them in my caucus. I need their voices, I need their expertise, and I need their fight. These two are fighters and they're practical and they call me on my BS, <laughs> which I have a little bit of every now and then and they care deeply about this state and about you as their constituents. And I'm so, so lucky to serve with them. So thank you so much for letting me be here. Do we want to do questions? I don't know. Yes. We want to do questions. Do All right, let's do questions. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I find it very difficult some days to not get really angry at people like Eddie Morrow. What, what do I do with this anger? How do I help Dr. Srinivas get elected? So Eddie Morrow is running in a primary down in Iowa or in uh, Des Moines, House 30, um, for Bruce Hunter's seat. Bruce Hunter, a great fighter of labor, a great friend of mine, my uh, legislative mentor for a long time, officially assigned. Um, and he's running in a primary against Dr. Megan Srinivas, who is an infectious disease doctor who really raised a lot of awareness um, during COVID. And... Um, He's leveling some pretty untrue charges at her. I mean, the best thing you can do is share correct information when it gets shared on Facebook. And she called me concerned. I have to stay out of primaries. It's very hard for me. Um, she called me concerned and I said, get on the doors. Just go talk to voters. At the end of the day, that's what matters the most, is talking to voters. Um, we do get mad at our own sometimes, right? right. Democrats fight. Right. Uh, and my, because we care. Because we care. Uh, I used to work at Iowa Public Television. Does anybody know who Dan Miller was? He was the general manager of Iowa Public Television for years. He was my mentor and a dear friend. And he used to say that at Iowa Public Television, we were like an Irish family. We fight like, like, we'll fight like hell on the inside, but don't you dare come at us from the outside. <laughs> like, we're gonna fight in here, but don't you dare. Like, I'll defend my brother that I fight with. I don't know that that's always true of us. But um, look, we gotta, we gotta channel our anger into action. And that means doors, and that means postcards, and that means volunteering. And I know you're tired, I know it. But we saw in 2020 what happens when we don't engage with voters that way, and now we can do it again. So let's take that anger and channel it toward good, effective progress. I know it's hard, we got like three days. Turn off your TV too. I would have probably argue that even though we need to be on Facebook and liking all of our posts and stuff and not engaging with Republicans, we could probably turn Facebook off a little bit too. That would probably be good for all of us. Yeah. Except for Robbie, I don't think there's anybody here under 50. Okay. What are we doing to get Robbie's generation? Well, right. So we're, we're actually looking at voters in different ways. We have a group that we've identified um, that is young left ideologues who look at the world very differently than uh, I do. And I've had many fights with my 22-year-old daughter and her 24-year-old boyfriend. Um, what we're finding is that this, this 
ap this, I would say, antipathy, right? People who do not like Joe Biden are, a lot of Democrats don't like Joe Biden in that sort of group, um, but are willing to listen to Democrats in other parts of the of a ballot. So um, Joe Biden's popularity in Iowa is not necessarily reflective of Democrats' popularity in Iowa. We're learning that. But what we're doing is we're trying to reach them in different ways, right? So we're um, trying to meet them where they are. Our biggest goal this year is meet voters where they are. Instead of telling Robbie, this is what you need to believe, come on, do what we did back in the, you know, back in 96, we ran like this. I still feel like 96 was not that long ago. And I, you know, my friends it was. Um, I was married in 96 and my 26th wedding anniversary is coming up. So it was a while ago. But um, we're trying to meet them where they are, so we're listening more. We've done focus groups across the state. We're trying to reach them in different ways. We know they don't watch TV. We know that they don't listen to radio, but they listen to podcasts. We know that they're on social a lot. But they also really want authenticity. I'm just going to curse for one minute. You don't want bullshit, do you? You can see right through it. And, I mean, not that you can't. Your bullshit detectors are all very good, I'm sure. But, <laughs> but this young generation really, really doesn't want it. And so being honest with them, being authentic, I get it, right? I get it. Can, can we talk more? Can I listen more? And, I want, and I'm having to listen to some hard truths from people who are under 50, which I am too technically for like another <laughs> 14 months. <laughs> but, um, you know, trying to listen and hear what exactly it is that they want from their leaders. They're not concerned about party. They want somebody who's gonna listen to them. They want weed legalized in the state because they see the disparities that happen. They want progressive policies advanced. And so talking about being a little more boldly progressive when possible, while also balancing the needs of getting to the majority, is a really hard, hard, what's it called? Tightrope to walk, but it's worth trying. So we're listening a lot and trying our best. And we're just gonna make Robbie sit in a room and tell us all of his opinions. Which, by the way, my daughter seems to have no trouble doing. So I can't imagine you would struggle at all. No, no, exactly. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, that's you. Jody. Jody. Um, so I want to, uh, we're out on the doors. We're talking, you know, this is what will happen. You know, what's what, positive? I think we have to have something to counter 2% tax or whatever, flat tax or whatever it is, because that's what they're going to be running on. They're going to say, look what we did for Iowa, we're keeping your taxes low, blah, 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 blah. And there are a lot of people that don't know how damaging that is, you know, and then suddenly now we're back. I mean, how do we, I would bet that that's going to be a big thing that they're going to be sure. running on. Yep, so they, they passed this flat tax that isn't a flat tax, right? Um, and um, our, our counter to that continues to be, do you know when you're going to see the benefit of that tax? Four or five years down the road. Do you know how big that's going to be? Not very. You know who gets it first? The richest Iowans. Do you know who gets the biggest cut? The richest Iowans. So it's reminding them that while they're calling it a flat tax across the board, it isn't, first of all. And secondly, it is they made sure that their rich friends got it first. And so my question always is, have you seen the benefit of the tax yet? tax cut yet. Do you know what it means for your family? Look into it, because I bet you'll realize that you won't see any benefit until four years down the road, if then. What we don't do, and I'm going to be honest with you, is we don't talk about what it's going to do to services. It just doesn't work, right? Iowans don't care. Um, they, they want, I mean, it's pocketbook. It's what, I'm paying five dollars for gas? Tell me I'm going to get less money, I'm going to have to pay less money in taxes. That works. So it's then calling the, taking this sort of idea of a, flat, of a tax cut and asking them if they've seen it and telling them that they won't see it for four years and putting in there that Republicans put their rich friends first and you last. We proposed the opposite. Again, we propose things that are going to get hearings, right? Beth, how many bills have you sponsored that never even got a subcommittee, right? Or, or we propose things all the time. And we can point to it. We voted on things. We have votes. We can prepare you for those things. But we propose the opposite, where it starts with the lowest income Iowans. If we're going to do this, which we don't think is a good idea, let's at least give it to people, middle class Iowans first. And they, of course, didn't even pass. So we, try, we tried some things. But the bottom line is, it sounds good in theory. What does it look like for your family right now? 
and try to localize it and personalize it as much as possible. Yeah? You're giving us some really good talking points for when we knock on doors. How, how do you share that with all the other people that aren't here that are going to be knocking? <laughs> well, they should come. No, I'm just <laughs> Come on, this is like a secret session and they can't know. No, we are, um, we, I'm leading an effort with um, a lot of different folks around the state. So um, with the Senate, with the congressional campaigns, with the party, with the governor, with Deidre DeGere's campaign, with the Senate campaigns, to try to get the word out about sort of a new way to look at the Iowa, or the Democratic Party brand in the state. Not the capital IDP, but the Democrats in, in Iowa. And we're doing trainings for county chairs on messaging in this framework and this meeting voters where they are thing. Um, in terms of branding, we're doing that with those county chairs this month, I think. And then, um, but also, we have talking points that we can get to you, I'm sure, at Canvas kickoffs, we'll have talking points at those things. We're trying to make sure that we have, because here's the thing, for the most part, people don't want to talk policy at the door, but if they're hearing about a tax cut, that's easy to counter. So we're going to try to have some talking points that are available, that we're going to make available to county chairs and to campaigns that they can have at Canvas launches and things like that. Yeah, Russ. Uh, if I could add to that, the, camp, the party puts out a weekly newsletter called the Demo Memo. And our communication team meets weekly with the House communication team and the Senate communication team. There's kind of a top, uh, top line message. The popular place that people like, it's called Top Talkers. And right there, if you want to call, it says call Chuck Grassley and join yours, click on the names to, to uh, contact and click here to write an email. Boom. The template comes up. If you want to, uh, if you want to, some of them it's uh, something on Twitter. There's a template that comes on, you can add anything once. So that's another way. And even if you, uh, if you don't want to do that when you're at the door, have your phone out, open up or print out that demo memo, the top talkers option. It, 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 we're, we're, we are communication, and we are trying to lift each other up so we can help lift you up as you're going door to door, or going to your community of faith, or going to the bowling alley, et cetera, et cetera. And I do have, I do have a weekly newsletter too that, would, I mean, they're going to look a lot alike that has house things. So it's things we voted for this year. This week's newsletter is my speech, essentially, right? So it talks about the $300 million for public schools versus $300 million for corporate tax cuts. It talks about the things we proposed versus the things they proposed. So. Other questions? And the link to the demo memo is on the Story County Democrats webpage. Right. You click on it and show off. You thank, you. Email. Thank, you, thank you. My link is not on there. Right. I was going to ask about that. We'll put it out there. We'll put it out there. All right. Any other questions? So I know I've given you work. Oh, Johnny. Well, Jennifer, the first thing you say when you knock on that door and they answer is, are you registered to vote at right. this address? So if you're going out door knocking, Get them registered, and if they register Republican, hand it back to them. Yeah, yeah, have a mail it in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we right, exactly. We know for a fact that um, you know re voter registration is an issue. We also know there are a lot, a lot, a lot of people who don't vote who are already registered. So we got to get to both of them. Um, we need to. It, it's not just enough to register them, which you which you know. We have to then activate them and motivate them to use that registration to go actually vote and make it as easy as possible when Republicans are making it as hard as possible to vote. Um, we are a pretty mobile community. Right, right, which is great. All right, well, I know I've given you work to do. I'm sorry about that, but I am a professor, and that's what we do is we get homework. And uh, I'm just so grateful to have the chance to come up here. I think it's a great crowd. I don't know about you, Beth, but uh, they have a lot of questions, and they're pretty amazing. We have all the best people. The best people here. <laughs> And we've talked about the ones who aren't here, obviously. So um, thank you for having me, and we'll get you all the information you need. Thanks, you guys, so much. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Um, she has been really terrific to work with, and um, the messaging thing, I think, is a huge thing that we are going to continue to work on, but I really appreciate all the work that Jennifer has done, not on that, but everything else in terms of leading the house. I don't know if you know what a rotten job that is, <laughs> but it is not an easy job. Well, and look at Ross Wilburn, <laughs> another really tough job. So um, when Jennifer says she uh, was couldn't answer what are the good things we've done in the house, that happens to me so often. 
<laughs> it does. It happens to me so often. I think we did radon testing. Oh yeah, that's a good one. See, oh, that's a great one. okay, so we we've, we've been working on that for a long time. So now we're going to test schools for radon so we can keep kids from getting and teachers and workers from getting lung cancer that's from radon. One. It is a good yeah. one. And, and one other thing, we um, made it. We did not make it harder to get food assistance. That's right. We stopped that too. We stopped that. <laughs> so that that was a battle, and I just you know we got to we got to point out there's some and the line your doctors about abortion pill. That didn't happen. Oh, that didn't happen. That was a good one. Right. It didn't get very far, but yeah, that, that's good. That didn't happen. That's very, 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 very crazy. But um, yeah, it didn't happen. That would sometimes when something like that doesn't come to the floor. It makes me feel, man, that would have been fun just to rip them apart on. Except then when it comes to the floor, it's because it's going to pass. Uh, that's true. So we want them, yes. That's true. But it is fun yes. to poke holes in that. Absolutely. One thing I neglected to do is thank all of my volunteers. So um, there is a list here. I do have a program, but I just want to point out a few um, people who really like, like the core group. So Betty Baird, where are you? Are you still here? Betty Baird back there. Um, Carol Lamb, of course. Cheryl Langston and um, Marsha Thompson, I think are the, they're all sitting over there because they're tired. They've been working really hard. So that's the core group that there's, um, Mary Sue Hartung isn't here because she's working down at Democratic Headquarters. She also was a part of the core group and have done just a great job and worked really hard to make this a success. I'd like to turn the program over briefly to um, Ross to do the hat pass. So good morning and thanks everybody. Uh, the hat pass. Um, and I, too, want to echo uh, the thanks of our leader, Khan First. She said she's uh, new. I'm relatively new, too. But, boy, she packs a punch, doesn't she? Yeah. 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 Uh, and so if you haven't given already or if you can give a little bit more, I keep going back to what's that one more thing I can do? What's that one more phone call? What's the one more door I can knock on? What's the one more hour I can spend up getting ready for a media interview? Uh, it's something that we all are going to, uh, and I'm asking all of you, I mean, obviously we're angry, we're tired, we're fed up, but now the primary is on Tuesday, it's the dog days of summer, it's time to get fired up, right? Because I'm, I don't know about you, I'm fired up and ready to win some elections. So if you can, I've, um, I've got my Iowa Democratic Party hat, uh, and I'll just walk around, and uh, I won't sing because then people will leave. I will. Uh, <laughs> oh, you'll sing and do that? No. <laughs> By the way, if you ever need a DJ or an MC, okay. Wanda, she yeah. did a great job. I got uh, lots to say. Justice, so <laughs> very good. All righty. Thank you so much. You know, I think one of the questions that came up, too, about young people, if I could, if, later, would you mind if I add on Please to that? Do. Please because do. Because you said localize it. Um, uh, Beth and Herman and I, uh, we had the good fortune of being invited by someone that came to, uh, thank you so much, that came to the legislature, a uh, young person, uh, as a, wanted to do an in, uh, internship, or uh, a shadow for the day, and did. And they were talking about, uh, I call it, what was the bill last year, I call it the anti-diversity equity inclusion yeah, bill, that led to the, uh, you know, banning or future burning of books, that type of thing. Um, they, they mentioned that, uh, thank you so much, they were going to be um, hosting a, sponsoring a walkout on school. And, uh, you know, as, as the, the adult in me is like, well, you know, I don't want to sanction, but I said, you know what, um, when I was in high school, when I was in high school, uh, <laughs> we had skip day and went uh, and had, uh, went to the park. Uh, well, you're talking about skipping, ab about something that is affecting all of us and future generations. And so I will gladly come. Uh, Herman and Beth, we were out there. We didn't talk. We just observed. I got, um, it was in the news. I got a couple of hate emails, but sure. that was okay. That was okay. And, was um, right. yeah, yeah. And uh, I just got an email. I don't know if you all have received it. Uh, up, there's upcoming around the country the uh, March for Our Lives. Mm -hmm. They're trying to organize one here in Ames. That's another way that, again, let the issue drive. And here you see the, the chair of the Iowa Democratic Party. I want you to register as a Democrat. 
but I want you to register and I want you to vote because we're going to talk to you and when you think about the issues that we talk about that affect all of us, I believe at the end we win that argument. That's how we get those uh, folks who are not registered. That's how we get them to go, you know what, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with the Democrats this time. So thank you all for that little extra um, and I will turn it back over to Beth. Thank you so much, Ross. Ross has been a great colleague to work with, and I really appreciate him coming and helping out this morning. I never did recognize my family who's here, Robbie. I, I guess you got recognized earlier, <laughs> uh, Robbie, my son, and he has been my clerk for the last two years. He's um, worked remotely as my clerk, just moved back here from Idaho, so we're happy to have him back in Ames, and um, more family around is always good. This is a great crowd. As I said, all the great people are here. I appreciate you coming and um, let me know um, how I can help you, but we need to get out there. We need to be going door to door. We need to be making the phone calls. We're not going to make any progress unless we do the work, unless we have the money. So um, again, thank you for being here and I'll, I know there is more food and there's more drinks. So please help yourself.